I hit record as well. Recording there. I feel like I should announce to everyone that I'm recording now. Oh, Richard, my nose is all stuffed. No, it's not, is it? A little bit. I learned a life hack. I don't know. It's probably like everybody knows this, but like whenever my nose would get stuffed, like you'd always have it like alternating, like where you can breathe out of one nostril but not the other. And it's always super annoying. And whenever that happens, I always lay on the back of my head. One day I realized if you turn, so if like whichever nostril stuffed is the one facing up and you lay on the side of your head and you let gravity do the work, it'll clear it right up. Yeah. Didn't know that until like a year ago. When you sleep, do you do you move at all when you sleep? I usually sleep on my side, but for some reason, whenever my nose was stuffed, I'd always just like lay on the back of my head. Because I think that's what I do until I'm ready to fall asleep. And then I turn over on my side. And so one day I was just like, man, I can't sleep because this is bugging me. So I gotta, I'm got i just going to roll over. And I did. All of a sudden, I felt it slowly clear up. I was like, oh, my God, I'm a wizard. <laughs> and then you tell people that, like, yeah, I totally already knew yeah. that. It's like, why don't people tell yeah, people I, this? Yeah, that's a good point. You know what? You know why, Sean? Because we, as a people, we don't share. We're not sharers anymore. You know, well, I think it's probably because it's like, well, that's gross. It's a personal thing. And obviously everybody's going to know that. I don't think they do. Like there's some things you're like, oh, my God, when I do this thing with my ball sack, it's amazing. Like, you know, don't share that at work. But if it's like, oh, my God, this is how I clear up my nose when it's all stuff. That's probably OK. Well, hang on. You just you just skip past the You skip past the good stuff. What what is it that you do? Well, tell me what if you take them and twist them four times. And then let it go. It does like a helicopter. It's amazing. Hang on. Ow, 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 ow. Ooh. <laughs> Shall you lie? <laughs> I can't get them unwound. Wait a minute. Did you say clockwise or counterclockwise? Oh, God. Oh, I said counter. Oh, no. I need an adult. <laughs> Kids, get mom. Please advise. <laughs> Turn cl- Turn clockwise. She Amanda comes in. It's like, did you do it counterclockwise? No, yeah, I didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? I heard that the, he said. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I have any like cool life hacks. Well, that's not true. I feel like I do, but I have no idea what they are. If that makes sense, like well, I'm think, unaware that I'm unaware that they are life hacks. Yeah, I think a lot of times like our life hacks. People just assume everybody else knows. Oh, here's one. Don't pay taxes. I mean, you could do that for about three or four years and then they'll come and, the, and be like, and, the, and then what? Then they come and be like, Hey, you haven't paid taxes in five years. You owe us even more money. But see, if you don't pay them, then they don't get your money. Boom. Life hack. <laughs> I went to accounting school. Did you really? <laughs> no. But I did stay at Holiday Inn Express. It was great. I didn't pay for that either. <laughs> All right. Sean, this is uh for this cold open. Let's let's throw a little tease. Ooh. You know, I'll I'll tell you why. Why? Cuz you think I'm dying? No, not because I think you're dying. But I the reason is because, you know, like I think that the cold opens have become so good that people will just listen to them and then they'll stop listening to everything else. So what we need to do is we need to like throw, you got to throw a little, a little, a little nugget out there to get the people interested. So for this one, I'm just going to say, where do you go? We are going to answer the question. Where do you go? After you die. Ooh. Man has been trying to find that out for millennia. And we have the answer. <gasps> and we're going to talk about it right now. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of romance. Sean, today I have That's my heavenly music. Because we teased it. We're gonna talk about what happens after you die. 
That's right. We're going to talk about what happens after you die. But before that, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a story about a news story. And this news story got me thinking. And so I went in search of what happens after you die. And I have found multiple answers. Ooh. Are they all good answers? Accurate answers? They're all, they're all very accurate answers. It, all, it depends on you. Okay. Hit me. Okay. So, so first I'm going to tell you the story. And the story is, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and give you the headline. Uh, scorned wife. Uh Oh yeah. That ne- things never no. turn out well when they start with that. Yeah. Wife comes home early from work and finds husband in bed with dead friend. And then the husband died from a self-inflicted shotgun wound to the <laughs> penis. <laughs> And then he stabbed himself 84 <laughs> times in the back. I'm not a and big fell out of a second story window. I'm not a big Larry, the cable guy, but the one joke I remember of his is like guns don't kill people. Husbands who come home early from work, kill people. <laughs> Scorned wife raids ex-husband's cryogenics lab. Oh, stealing shit. Stealing the frozen brains of people who hoped to be brought back to life. So wait, was the ex-husband? So I've always wondered this. Like, if was he like they divorced and then he died, or was he dead? And she's like, "Fuck that guy. He died. He's an ex-husband." No, I don't think he. I don't think he died. I think it was his. I think he was the guy that owned the lab. Oh shit! What kind of insurance policy do you have for that? I don't know, but I don't think an insurance policy covers like your actual brain. Yeah. Like intellectual property comes into effect. It's like pop, pop would have been <laughs> back. You took away pop, pop forever. It's like, well, I mean, this was really a scam to begin with. Um, this, this is, this is from, this is from the sun. Um, Valera Uda, Udalova, Valera Udalova. Oh, so this happened fifth, in Tennessee. Uh, this happened in Switzerland. Russia. Ah, potato, potato. Uh, Valera Udalova, who is 59, and staff from her company grabbed the remains of people who paid thousands of dollars hoping they could be resurrected. Some of the corpses were from Britain and the U.S. and were stored in her ex-husband's lab in the Moscow region of Russia. This is a weird name. A Hill Tur, Mr. Tur, huh? That's weird. <laughs> uh, first off, like, how angry do you have to be that you're basically gonna, you know, like, ruin not only your husband's, like, like you're like you're ruining your your ex husband's business and and reputation and. Life. I mean, only if the story gets out because it's like, hey, is Pop Pop's brain still there? It's like, yeah, sure, it totally is. That's a good point because the whole thing is always like, well, we don't have the technology. We can freeze them, but we don't have the technology to like unfreeze them and put them in in uh, in other bodies. And to so, be fair, so we don't even know if totally... freezing them. Yeah, we don't even know if freezing them actually like stays them or anything. We're just like, hey, if we freeze it, then obviously, I mean, we do that with our steaks and our chicken, so. That should keep it right. It's still dead tissue. Like Walt Disney. Walt Disney's all froze up thinking he'll come back for Frozen 3. I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, see, exactly. It's it's basically like what if somebody, like what if, what if they actually, what if Disney took Walt Disney's brain back and replaced it at the cryogenics lab? With, like, a fucking, I don't know, like, a cantaloupe or something. Oh, you know what? If, like, so when Kevin Feige leaves this world, like, that's who they need to replace the brain with. Like, we're so close to technology, let's throw Disney's brain away and put Feige in there. Because if he comes back, then we're going to get lots of cool stuff. That's true. You get a fuck ton of Marvel. You get all all the Marvel movies. You get Spider-Man from now to Kingdom Come. Also, uh, I, I don't think we talked about this during uh the Spider-Man review. But I actually learned something interesting about 
Spider-Man, about the Spider-Man movies. Kevin Feige worked on every single Spider-Man movie. Oh, really? I didn't know that. He was he was a production assistant during for on the on the Sam Raimi movies. So he was just like, you know, like an intern, you know, the guy that like nobody listens to. He's like, hey guys, I got a great idea for Spider-Man. And then Sam Raimi's like, shut up. Put Bruce He's Campbell like, what if it? we set this up so that we can make like multiple phases with other superheroes? <laughs> It'll make lots of money. We'll yeah. just drop an Same Avengers reference. Like, but what if we have him look like he stepped out of a Blink-182 video? Yeah, and he's like, and hey, dance, Kevin Fergie, uh, go get me a coffee and don't come back for the rest of the day. I'm going to get you the best coffee ever. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. You're the man, they Mr. Raimi. The Whatever, Fergie. Sam Raimi just like pours it out in yeah. front of him. There are boogers in this coffee? I bet there's boogers in this coffee. <laughs> Drink it, Fergie. <laughs> Taste the boogery flavor. <laughs> there's no boogers in it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so yeah, so he was a production assistant for the Sam Raimi movies, and then also he was he was credited as an executive producer. Um, for the Andrew Garfield movies, but it, from what it sounds like, it sounds like it was kind of like an after, like an, like an after the fact kind of executive producer credit. Like it's, it sounded like he was the guy that would like give possibly give notes on the script and the production, but nobody really listened. Yeah. Again, he's like, Hey, what if we like make this in multiple phases? We'll drop like yeah. an Avengers reference. I don't remember who directed like, hey, those what movies. If we put, what if we mention other other superheroes in the in the Spider Man movies? I'm like, whatever, Kev. We're not making those, so what do we well, give a fuck? Amazing, no, but, but amazing Spider Man came out after Iron Man and stuff, though. Uh did it? Yeah, because I saw them. I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2012. Cause Iron Man was. Yeah, because Iron Man was 2007. Yeah, yeah. You're right. So he's like, hey, let's combine these. And Sony's like, no. Our property. We paid for it. Whatever. You're making these dumb movies. These are not even going to last. Spider-Man. That's what's going to last. Sony. Also having Spider-Man. That's going to last. Soon you'll be begging us to put your Iron Man in our movies. Yeah. What are you going to do next? That one about the stupid raccoon? Fucking idiot. (laughs) They're not going to freeze your brain like Disney. Get the fuck out of (laughs) here. And so then, do. and so then he gets he get you know he's fucking Kevin Feige. So now he gets to make No Way Home, and he's like, you know what, you know what, motherfuckers. Not only am I gonna take the actors from your fucking movies <laughs> and put them in my movie, but I'm gonna make everybody like them more than when they were <laughs> in your fucking movies. <laughs> That's like been his long game all along. We hear, yeah, an, right? we hear an announcement like two weeks. He's like, I'm retiring. I'm done. This is the part where he's, he's fucking, he's calling up Sam Raimi. He's like, hey, hey, Sam, how's that feel? What, what, how's, how's, how's what feel, Kevin? Me living rent free in your head, yeah. motherfucker. You go bring, you go bring me a coffee go- <laughs> or I'm going to redo Evil Dead. Go get me a coffee. And then I'm going to put bookers in <laughs> <laughs> and pour it out in your mouth. Idiot. Raimi's like, I'm 96 years old. I don't have to take this. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I heard that. And it, it, yeah. I thought that was interesting. I was like, damn, he worked on every single Spider-Man yeah, movie. That's pretty cool. And then he puts those actors. He put, he puts those characters in his movie and <coughs> almost kind of like retcons you into liking all of it. Yeah. There's a big push to get uh, Andrew Garfield's amazing Spider-Man three made now. Yeah, see? So now everybody's like, it's not Kevin. Like, you know Kevin's, like, probably standing in front of Sony, like, just in a lounge chair. Wearing a robe with his legs spread. Right. He's not, a robe he, and that's it. He doesn't even have a robe a, and socks. Yeah, he doesn't even have a cup of coffee. He's got a whole pot. He's drinking it straight out of it. And it's not even a long robe either. Like, it cut, like it cuts off, like, right at the top of his legs. Yeah, it's dirty, too. <laughs> he doesn't even care. It's like one of those you find, like, in the back of your mom's it's closet. White with, like, yellow stains. Yeah. With coffee stains all over it. Yep. And it's from, like, he'll take a big gulp out of that big uh, canister. <laughs> it just dribbles all over. He's like, what? <laughs> what? 
Who's got a hey, bagel? Let me dry it off with this wad of cash. <laughs> uh, anyway, frozen brains. <laughs> um, a Russian woman being accused by her cryonics tycoon ex-husband of raiding his lab and stealing brains and frozen cadavers of wealthy people hoping to be brought back to life. He claims the transportation of the bodies was organized by his ex-wife, who gathered some staff from her company to assist her. Police intercepted the trucks with cryogenic patients in tanks full of liquid nitrogen shortly after the raid. Also, they were at least still frozen. Yeah. Some of the corpses belong to wealthy Americans and Brits. Uh, it has preserved over uh, Creo Rus. Is apparent, I get. I think is the name of the company. Creo Rus estimates that it has preserved over eighty remains, including brains and full bodies. The company refers to these cadavers as patients, one third of which are foreigners. It is still unclear whether the transportation of the cadavers and the brains damaged any chances of revival. Because, and I quote, "We have no fucking idea how cryogenics works." Yeah. No, that's not what he said. That's the excuse. Like it's not. It's because like the technology is getting too close. It's like, oh fuck, we haven't been like we haven't had these plugged in for a while. Yeah. Um, Listen, four thousand years ago, my ex wife was a total fucking pill, right? <laughs> and so then she put she throws your body onto a truck, and so now you live in a goat. So there's that. So bah, ah, ah. so <laughs> bad day. Am I right? <laughs> 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 Good news is you can go up a mountain like there's like it's nothing. Yeah, and I don't know if you know this, but goats are pretty horny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that rams? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, but oh fuck it, get out of here, you stupid goat. Go chew on a can. <laughs> I don't know. I saw it in a cartoon. Uh, according according to the ex husband, it, it seems she doesn't care what happens to their chances of being revived. An expert with Creo Rust says during the heist, nitrogen inside the tanks was spilled, which caused the human to r- remains to reach higher than desired temperatures. Ooh, so they were they were getting a little sweaty. Yeah. Thawing them out. Yeah, and like the like lips. A turkey on Thanksgiving. The lips were coming out. It's like, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> oh. oh, my God, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it burns. That's a good point. Why don't they just put these, like, be like, we're totally going to prove cryogenics works. All right, put the corpse in a tank, and it's not even like liquid nitrogen. It's just like. Water with ice cubes, blue f- with with blue dye in it. <laughs> yeah, it's a total scam. Because I mean, it, you're just guessing at this point. Because I don't is like Sean. I don't know if you know this, but there was a woman who was cryogenically frozen because she had a very debilitating disease, and there was a guy that is her husband that was hell bent on finding a cure, mm. and then Batman showed up and just fucked the whole thing. Yeah. And so now he's super mad. Yeah. All right, everybody, freeze. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Batman, why don't you take a chill pill? <laughs> oh, so many cold puns. Yeah. And the accent didn't help. It's just <laughs> dripping with cold puns. Uh, cryonics technology seeks to extend lifespan and also utilizes frozen nitrogen to preserve dead bodies in hopes of one day being revived. Full body cryopreservation is estimated to cost around $35,000. Well, you got to think like there's, there's a lot of electricity in that. Like, you got to know the brains because, you, you know, just think about if you're walking. With- like, liquid nitrogen isn't cheap. Like, what, like, yeah, that's a good point. Like, how do, how exactly does that work? Do they just, like, saw open the top of your head and, like, yank it out and throw it in a fucking and, and just, like, like, he shoots, he scores. Just throw it in a. I would think so. When you have to, be, like, if you're carrying, like, six brains at one time, they fall and bounce all over. Like, oh, shit, who was who? Like, how? <laughs> and even think of, like, the hospital. 
Like, there's all the baby mix-ups back in, like, the 80s. Like, what happens if they mix them up? Like, uh, was this the brain we're supposed to send or this one? I don't know. Yeah, at least babies you can kind of tell apart. Yeah, I mean. If I put two brains in front of you, you're not going to tell. You're not going to know which is which. If I pull, like, if I put three brains in front of you and then did uh, three card Monty shuffle, you're not going to know which is which. You're not going to know which one's the king. I'm going to pick the pinkest one. (laughs) I thought they were gray. Aren't they all gray? Oh, I don't know. I thought they were kind of pinkish, like kind of flesh color. I don't know. Cartoons always said they were gray. That's why they say gray matter. Use your gray matter. No, I've never heard that. You've never heard the term gray matter? I've heard gray matter, but I didn't know it was brain. Yeah, it's gray matter. Yeah, let's look it up. What is the color of a brain? What is the color of a brain? The human brain color physically appears to be white, black, and red pinkish. So it's like saw, like brain, like you see brains in saw. Oh yeah. 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 So I bet, I bet like, Uh, like if they've been, uh, like oxygen's got to them a lot, they'd probably look a little bit gray. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. They just go like an avocado. Yeah. And so, oh shoot. What happens if somebody likes avocados that works there and actually cuts into it, puts (laughs) it on their toast. Brains aren't terrible. Have you ever had a brain? You ever eaten brain? I haven't. I've had tongue. I've never had brain. Um, I've had some, it's uh, like pan fry it, like pan, like bread it and fry it. Human, right? Uh, what what other kind is there? Oh, okay, I was going to say, if you're like, oh no, it's uh, it's squirrel brain. I was going to be like, you monster. No, uh, cow, cow, you can do cow brains. You can do. Oof, dangerous lamb, though. I think lamb's brains. You eat the wrong cow brain, mad cow disease. That's true. That's how that happens. Uh. Full body, so so for the full body, it's thirty five thousand, and for just <coughs> for just brain preservation is fifteen thousand. Dang, would you? So, like, are people actively trying to like fi- like because you got to have frozen brains to try out, right? So they're like experimental brains. Like, if you spend like a thousand dollars, you're just an experimental brain. It's like, hey, in like five years, we're gonna try it out. It may or may not work. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, Sean, isn't that like it's like the equivalent of flying coach, <laughs> but it's but it's death. Yeah, um, I mean, you're already dead, so it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of a on a wing and a prayer kind of thing. Yeah, I, if it was me, I don't understand why I wouldn't want my entire body preserved. Like I'd go for just the brain, right? Because uh, let's be real. By the time I have saved up, you know, thirty five thousand dollars for my body to get frozen i'm i'm like this body is not going to be in the sh- in, in any sort of condition that i would want to continue living in yeah you'd want it to be where like they're lab growing bodies and putting you in something that looks like jason momoa yeah yeah right like oh we all look like this now yeah well how do we tell each other apart we don't and that's great i'm like yeah that is great <clears throat> manda comes up it's me richard it's me it's like yeah <laughs> you don't look like Brittany murphy oh my god it's it's frozen amnesia <laughs> who are you <laughs> dad it's us oh god i don't remember uh by freezing the brain or body it keeps it from naturally going through the decomposition process after death many hope cryogenics will allow the patient time for scientific technology to advance enough to bring them back or cure what they died from about 165 people have already gone through this process in the united states hmm. yeah but like you said like if you're sick they gotta like be like, well, you got cancer. It's like, oh, freeze me. Yeah. Cause that's where it'd be like yeah. your body. But even then, like you like you said, you'd want to wait until they're throwing your noggin into like a lab generated body. Right? Cause imagine that. Like you spend thirty five thousand dollars and then you get revived, you know, two thousand years later. Oh yeah. And you're in and you're in your, you know, your fucking normal stupid fat body yeah. and everybody's walking around like a Greek God. And you're like, Oh, what? I should have just done the brain. Yeah, what the fuck? You come out, you're like, Oh, I'm the only fatty. It's like, Hey, Hey, Dr. Momoa. Uh, it's Dr. George. It's Dr. Stevens, whatever. Hey, can you just like pull my brain out and put me in like the Momoa body? It's like, well, we don't have the technology to like pull a yeah. brain out. You- All we could do is just revive it. Yeah. We can't, Yank it out and put it in something else. Don't you feel like a horse's ass? You should have just went for the brain. (laughs) 
would have saved money and would have been See in this See what you body. get for trying to flex? <laughs> See what you get for trying to fucking flex your goddamn money? See what happens? Well, how much is this going to cost me? Oh, well, money's not a thing now. <laughs> Fuck. Oh. Where's McDonald's? Well, what, well, what, what, what can I, what do I do? I don't know. Do you have any life skills? No, I was making the money. I didn't have time <laughs> to develop life skills. Oh, shit. Uh, with the help of staff at her company, Open Cryonics, Udalova allegedly, allegedly cut through a metal wall to enter into the storage facility before emptying the nitrogen out of several large tanks containing fully preserved human bodies. She also grabbed detached human brains from metal medical boxes during the heist. She and her staff then hauled the tanks on trucks before driving off and were shortly intercepted by the authorities after they were alerted. So this is a heist movie. Yeah. But what the fuck are you getting? Like, well, that's what do you do with a, like, oh, I got a bunch of frozen bodies. You just what, sell them on eBay. What the fuck are you doing? Well, that's with where shit? you dig deeper, Richard. I bet there's somebody in there she was trying to get. So like she grabbed like 15 to 20 of the bodies, but there was really one specific one she was trying to get. The man she wants to leave. The man she left her husband for. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. It's a long con. He died. Yeah. Fucking love triangle right there. Oh, that's what that is. he died of a car accident. And like they got to him just in time. Oh my god, it's like Mr. Freeze, but real life. See, yeah. he's the, there's a guy and he's frozen, and she's like, I need to save him. And so then she concocts this fucking super villain heist yeah. to save the man she left her husband for. No, no, Richard, it's even deeper than that. So she dies in a car accident. She doesn't have enough. He's like, he's on like the tubes, like he's on like the life alert or life support system. Not life alert, that's uh-huh. where you fall down. but like she's like oh my god i don't have money to save him and the guy the guy who is her husband now walks in to be like if you marry me i'll put his brain on ice oh wow yeah and so she's waiting and like technology now is there and so he's like yeah too bad because i'm gonna pull the plug because you're my wife yeah Fuck this dude. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, yeah. My hands on it. Oh, I'm going to do it. And so she had to divorce him and break in and steal her ex-husband back because the technology's there, Richard. But she had yeah. to take all the bodies. Stand by your frozen man. Yeah. Uh, Creo Russ also cryogenically preserves pet remains. Oof. I've seen that movie. That sounds bad. <laughs> For owners... Ho- Currently, Creo Russ estimates they have 10 dogs, 19 cats, four birds, two rabbits, five hamsters, and a chinchilla. I mean, I get the dogs and the cats and the birds a little bit. The rest of them? Yeah, I, 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 nah, I, nah, I'm good. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I did just lose my dog last year and we got a new puppy. And I definitely know they're going to have different personalities. But, like, even if you brought your dog back, like, if that's what they experimented on, and you get what's your old dog brain back, like, is it really your dog, though? Like, are you going to be able to tell? It's fucking, yeah. Then you're going to be like, see, this is how you remake Pet Cemetery. Ooh, ooh yeah. I like it. Uh, just a bunch of, just a bunch of vats of frozen pets. We and figured all, out the science. Yeah, and then some crazy kid jumps up and cuts you in the li- in the Achilles tendon with a scalpel. Yeah, because they do the animals and they're okay at first, or they think, and there's like weird accidents that happen. And somebody's like, "My kid got ran over by a tractor trailer. Bring him back." <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't know. What's it? What's in that movie? Things that stay dead should stay dead. <clears throat> yes, yes. Con- contrary to what. Uh, the uh, the people of the Iron Islands believe what is dead should always die. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, Sean. So we were talking. So so I, uh, the end of the story is just basically. I mean, she she did it, but there's a pending investigation. Mm. I think that's why they had to throw in the word allegedly. I love. I always love it when they throw in the word allegedly. They're like allegedly. 
she did this, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then she did this. Yeah, and then after the trial, when they're found guilty, it's like, yep, they did it. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we know. Yeah, you, you, you said it. You, you said all, all the things. You just had to put the word allegedly in front of it. Um, so, Sean, this got me thinking about the cryogenics thing. So, cryogenics obviously. <laughs> is is a thing it's what you apparently do after or you know either when you're towards the end of your life or you've already died so i was wondering what are alternatives to being buried now as we all know well not all of us as the way it usually goes is you die then you pay some stupid amount of money it's like minimum Which, fifteen you know, grand. Is it that much? Is it that so, much? Yeah. Like the minimum, I, know, I think, is about for, ten to fifteen grand. For some reason, I thought it was more. So really, it's actually cheaper for them to just chuck your brain. Well, you probably a, still have to a, pay in like, an ice bath. Yeah, you probably still have to pay a body disposal. Yeah, that's how they get you. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, can I just put it in the, the backyard? Way- no, the deer and coyotes will get to it. Because <clears throat> the way it usually goes. Is you pay a stupid amount of money, and then some guys put a hose in your in your bum, and they suck everything out, and then in your bum, they I don't know where they put it. That makes then sense. They put some, then they put some makeup on your face, and they prop you up in a box. Yep. And then everybody stands around you and goes, Ooh, and then they stick you in the ground. Yep. Right. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, okay. Sean was such a great guy," and Richard's like, "No, he wasn't. He was an <laughs> asshole." Wait, th- I knew it. <laughs> Did you do a podcast with him? Yeah, I hated the guy. I'm glad yeah. he's dead. Did you know him? Are you? Why are you even here, Richard? I'm his wife. Richard, are you oh. okay? Well, yeah, I'm fine. Know, I right? hate him. No, Richard, are you okay? Yeah, he's an asshole. <laughs> I'm going with you, Sean. <laughs> Put me in the box. <laughs> I'll take his place. <laughs> oh God, the top comes off. <laughs> Um, so I looked into, and I found a list of things, alternatives, things you could do instead of the traditional, we're going to pump you full of chemicals and stick you in a metal box in the ground. Yeah. So basically the two common ones are that or cremation, right? Right. Right. So there is the traditional ground burial and then there is cremation. Okay. So now... I'm going to list some other ones for you, and you tell me, you, you, you give me your impressions on if, you st- if, if this is something you're interested in. Okay, Ray, the first one, mummification. Ooh. Uh, how, uh, you typically hear of mummification with historical burials of Egypt. However, although it is not as popular, this type of burial has been modernized and is still used in some cultures. It happens by submerging the body in a tank of liquid in order to preserve the body known as plastinization, and then they are mummified. Well, don't they take the organs out and put them in like jars and stuff? Well, I think that's what they did in Egypt. I don't know if that's what the, I don't know if they do that in the modern. <clears throat> if I can do it way. Egypt style, so instead of everybody getting like parts of my ashes or whatever, everybody gets a specific organ. <laughs> and which one? Which one would I get? Oh my god! Would you like? Could you like will them off? Yeah, I think so. That's what I want to do. Oh, that'd be great. What would I give you? Hmm. What would you give me? Uh, you're all sappy and sentimental, so Tiffany, get your heart. So what do I get? Uh, you, you'd get my tongue because that's how we've we've conversed and stuff. Oh, I like yeah. that. That's nice. Yeah. Tiffany, get my heart and my penis. So every time she it's wa- not an organ. Yeah, I guess you'd keep that on, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want that taken away because that'd be the shitty right? thing. Like if they mummify you, they're like, oh my god, we can bring people back that are mummified too. And they do that, and you're like, oh, no. well, I made a mistake. She took it out of the jar. Now it's useless. <laughs> well, freeze me now. <laughs> Put me back in. <laughs> Put me back in. Give me, the, give me that bandage. <laughs> no, but that means. Put me back in the ground. <laughs> what? Put me back in the ground. That'd be cool if you had, like, a sarcophagus. Like, you know, it gets willed to your great-grandkids, and they pull it out during Halloween. 
<laughs> they open they the prop lid. you up in front of the house. <laughs> oh, it looks so lifelike. Yeah, that's, that's Pop Pop Sean. Yeah. Remember, you got to put candy in front of the sarcophagus or else it gives you a curse. <laughs> <laughs> What's he holding? It's a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. The next, which I've actually heard of this and this one actually sounds kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me, you tell me what you think about it. Um, the other one is a tree burial. I've heard of that. Um, that one seems interesting. Uh, I like the idea of it. Like if the tree like actually grows and it's like, you know, a 50 to a hundred, you know, 200 year old type tree. My yeah. luck after like six months, it dies. <laughs> it was a bad winter. <laughs> It was a bad winter, and all the dogs peed on it. Like, all the dogs. Yeah. One dug it up and found a bone. It was the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> this is Walter. Ah! <laughs> uh, tree burial practices are common in places <coughs> such as the Philippines to protect the bodies from wild animals. The strange burial practice takes place by putting the body, putting bodies in a tree or embedding them in a tree trunk. You know, it would be cool, like, I don't know what you think about, like, afterlife stuff, but, like, if you actually became part of the tree, that'd be kind of sweet. Right? Like, all of a sudden, the tree sprouts, like, fingers? Well, no, I just think, like, you, you're the tree. You're just sitting there with, like, your branches. You're just kind of looking over the world. Because they say, like, the tree's roots and stuff, like, they communicate underground with other trees. That's a good point. So, like, if you, oh, my God. What if, you, what if you get buried next to, like, what if your tree is buried next to, like, an ugly tree? Oh god! And then yeah. the ugly trees like, "Hey sailor, blowing my way." You're like no, and, like, and the oh, wind god. blows. Like I can't stop. It's like oh, it's wind. getting all over me. <laughs> oh my fruit! <laughs> sap me, sap me good. I don't oh, wanna. No. I can't control this. <laughs> then, then Tiffany's on the other side of me, like where the wind's not blowing. It's like the wind always seems to blow that way, doesn't it? I can't control it. <laughs> it's not my fault. This isn't even tell that se- to your roots. <laughs> I can't. This isn't even sexually appealing. Um. Oh, okay. So there's so I so the tree thing we were talking about is two different kinds. There's two different kinds. One is tree planting, um, where your ashes are placed into soil with the seed to plant a tree, which doesn't affect the tree's DNA. This is a wonderful way of being buried by being great for the environment and giving special meaning, a special meeting place for family and friends to gather and remember the dead. Um, the other one, the tree burial thing we were talking about, is they actually like basically shove your body inside and inside a tree, like a living tree. Yes. Like they take a whole ass tree and they just stick your corpse in it. I don't know how that would work. So I feel like if you cut a tree open, you're hurting it. I would think so too. They just cut like a body sized hole in a big ass tree and then just, just, just prop you up inside of it. And then they just take the piece that they cut out and put it on top and squish you inside. What happens if they don't make it big enough though? Like they're shoving your body in there and trying to shut it real quick, but you keep flopping through like, damn it. I can't get his arm in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the tree burial is uh it takes place by putting bodies in a tree or embedding them into a tree trunk. Hmm. I wonder if that's something if you cut it enough and then like put it in and like seal it up if it's just enough the tree can heal itself. Yeah, I have no idea. That'd be kind of cool. Like I feel like you decompose and probably give like good like resources to the tree, but like if that tree got hit by lightning or if it fell over, then like your corpse is just laying out there. Like after like 50 years, if that happens and you're just like mangled looking corpses hanging out and somebody walks by and sees this down tree, like they're going to freak the fuck out. That's good. Oh my God, they're alive. <laughs> the trees are growing people. <laughs> Burn them all to the ground. Oh, there's just one. Well, fuck that tree. <laughs> I'd probably go um, for the, the being buried with the seed. Yeah, I I feel like that would I actually really like that idea because then like you don't have like there you don't have to go through the whole thing of you know chemicals and whatnot, you know, getting like pumped full of formaldehyde or whatever. And also uh you're not you're not taking up space in 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 a cemetery and and stuff like that. 
Um, when you could put like a little, uh, like a little headstone next to where the tree's buried. So <clears throat> even if something happened to the tree, at least like that would be where your remains were. So you'd still yeah. last forever. Or as long as those last, I guess. Well, I mean, not even that. Just you know, then the, there's a nice tree. Yeah, and you could you you could put the tree anywhere, and then and then people could just come and hang out by a tree, mm-hmm. which is always nice. Yeah, who doesn't love who doesn't love sitting by a big tree? And then, like after a hundred years, you have the little monument that says, "You know, Sean is buried here," and they'd be like, "Oh my god, that's creepy." Yeah, and then you know what? Uh, if you if you get put in a if you get if if the tree is in a super important spot, then nobody's gonna cut that tree down. Oh, yeah. Just be like, oh, that's Sean's tree. Yeah. No, but they'll be we like, can't put this highway here because Sean's tree. Yeah. But then whoever actually owns the land, they'll be like, we'll give you ten million dollars. Like, fuck that tree. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I already burned it. <laughs> um there's another there's another way, uh, another process called aquamation. Oh, is that where so people drink you? Aquamation. No. Uh, you. Aquamation is the pro- is <laughs> it's the so procedure meaty. of being bathed. It's it's the procedure of being bathed in water which speeds up the deterioration process. I'm melting. I'm melting. Yeah. Yeah, basically. I don't like this one. This one sounds messy. Well, I, I, like at the end of the day, like what? Like you're, you know, a big jar of, you know, brown water like what like now what yeah but that's you where like dump it in the ocean yeah but fucking, that's where like a kid comes sit up in your bathtub with it it's like oh my god i'm thirsty and they pop it open like oh smells go 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 what was that that was my grandpa my grand your my grandpa's inside you right you pour now it in little you pour it in little in little vials and sell it Ooh yeah and you create like ten thousand cannibals from that like oh my god i can't I got to get more of that flesh water. I need it. Need it in my veins. Yeah, I don't like that one. Yeah, there's a, the, the picture associated with this one is like a big scary tank that kind of looks like an iron lung. Cause it like, looks, it looks like they, mm. cause you think like it's bad enough. Like if you, if you have the uh, ashes of a loved one, if like when you're moving or you actually bump it, it falls, it goes all, all, all over the place. Like, oh, it sucks. And you got to vacuum it up. Could you imagine like knocking over that and like your grandpa or grandma's like liquid water just goes all over the place? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's one thing if you accidentally knock over the urn, it's completely another if you, you know, like spill your uncle in the bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, huh? Uncle left one more wet spot, didn't he? (laughs) (laughs) Gross. Uh, there's another process similar to that called resumation is an eco-friendly burial method that decomposes the body using an alkali and water-based solution under high pressure. So basically they like put <laughs> you in a pressure cook, cooker. Yeah. 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 They put you in a pressure. cooker. This breaks down the body to a liquid and bone ash. The liquid can be recycled into the ecosystem by pouring it into a garden or in nature, similar to the spreading of ashes, while the bone ash is collected and placed into an urn. Well, that wouldn't be too bad. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's kind of like cremation plus. Yeah. It's like light. It's You get less with your cremation. More goes into the environment, less you know, to spread around to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, here's a, here's a cool one. I don't know. I don't know if you're into, if you'd be into this, but, um, uh, it's never too late, Sean, to go to space. Space burials are practiced by launching ashes or for a higher cost, the full remains of a deceased into space via a rocket. You know, with uh, <clears throat> SpaceX and all those now, that that could become more common. Yeah, but you, can you imagine how fucking fucked up that'd be? You're an astronaut, and you're fucking going to the moon, and all of a sudden this fucking face, like, comes up on the window. I'd lose my fucking mind. <laughs> it's a good thing that I'd have a... It's a good thing I'd have a catheter in, because I would completely shit my spacesuit if all of a sudden Thunk. I just see fucking a body Thunk. just... 
bounce off the fucking windshield of my space shuttle. They all have like these metallic like imprints on that says I was already dead. <laughs> Thunk. <laughs> Thunk. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, you complain about space trash now. Think about it, there's a bunch of bodies up there. Yeah. And you would never de well, I guess there's radiation, so you'd probably start to deteriorate and stuff, right? Well, yeah, but it's also like super cold up there. Yeah. So you're frozen. I don't know, man. That seems, I feel like that's like that to me seems like, uh, like originally you'd think that like cryogenics was like the money flex, you know, like, oh, I spent 35 grand. I'm going to put myself in a bat in a, in a glass of ice water. But like this is, I'm going to launch myself into fucking space. Like, I feel like that's the money flex. Yeah, but I could see it being more of like, hey, we're going to do like just ashes. And so they just get like a big vat of ashes, like the max amount they can. And then they shoot the rocket up. And then just like when it gets up there, it just opens a trap door. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's in my mouth. It's in my uh, mouth. Oh, God. Oh. Got my head the wrong button. I've got 10,000 people in my mouth. This is like Friday at spring break. Am I right? Am I right? If they were to capture, I'd be erect right now. <laughs> Wait, because they're dead or because of spring break? I don't know if I want to be in a spaceship by myself with you. Uh, there is another process called dissolution where uh, basically they they chop you up into pieces and then put you in acid. That seems a little excessive. Yeah. Uh, dissolution is the body being placed into a tank of strong chemicals, causing it to dissolve. So there wouldn't be anything left at all then, right? Yeah. I don't know if I like that Except one. Except like, it'd be like Breaking Bad. You remember, did you see the, remember the the Breaking Bad? No, I remember them talking about that. Like they put the body in the was, tub and. Yeah, they put a body in the tub and then they pour all the shit in there. And so originally the plan was they were going to get these plastic barrels. They were going to stick the body, this body in a barrel and then pour all the shit in there. And then it was going to melt the body. Right. Well, uh, fucking Brian Cranston went to go get the plastic barrel. And the other guy, Aaron Paul, was like, I'm tired of waiting around for this dude. And so they put him in the tub. But apparently these chemicals don't eat through, don't eat plastic, which is why they put them in the barrel. It doesn't eat plastic, but they eat like everything else. And so it left this like it, it, he did it in like a second floor bathroom. So it ate through the tub and the floor and everything. And then just this big, like, like gooey mess, Ew. like crashes through the, through the ceiling onto the, onto the first floor. It was really gross. Yeah. Sounds like that's a big mess to clean up. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Promession. Promession, or it's Promethean. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the body is transformed into a fertilizer by being frozen in liquid nitrogen and turned into powder. That was not too bad. I kind of like the ones where your body gets kind of like used in nature, like the tree or like this. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of the same as the uh as the uh the the tree thing. Yeah, I like you the know? tree. Like you get plant or you <clears throat> you put in a garden or something like that. Yeah, I like the tree one a little bit better just because that's kind of more of like it's a still like a monument place to go. <clears throat> and it's well, good for it feels nature. a bit more permanent. Yeah, exactly. Or like that it's like, like I feel like fertilizer it's you know it's like hey, you know, hey, you helped us grow some really great pumpkins back in 2016 and now what? Yeah. Oh man, we got pictures of those great jack o' lanterns <laughs> that we that, that were then fucking smashed on November first. Um, exposure is a, is another one listed here. Uh, exposure, also known as a sky burial, is very common in locations such as Tibet. The ground is not suitable to dig graves, and a lack of resources makes it difficult to cremate bodies. The body of the deceased is released to the wild to allow animals and the natural elements to dispose of it. Ooh, I feel like that's kind of risky because that's one of those where, like I said, they forget where they throw your body. Then 10 years later, they find bones and stuff like, oh, my God, it's a murder scene. I mean, ba yeah, basically, they dump you in the woods and you're left to get, like, eaten by a bear. Yeah. Which to me feels super dangerous because let's say the bear eats you. 
And now the bear's like, hey, that was pretty good. Yeah. And then it goes into town and finds alive people. It's like, oh, my God, these taste just like the guy I found in the woods. Yeah. And then he tells all of his bear friends and all of his bear friends come. Yep. And then you've you've single-handedly started the animal revolution. Yep. And then after they eat all the yeah, humans, they, they forgot how to hunt their regular animals and they starve to death. So who's yep. really the monster, Richard? And then the so basically it's a it's a planet wide extinction event. Yep. I think they said that's how the second one happened. Of the four yep. planetary extinctions, that was number two. Totally tracks. Uh Memorial Diamonds. Ooh, I've heard something about that, like where they pressure your body yeah. into a diamond. Yeah. Um, Memorial Diamonds are made by pressurizing hair or ashes of the deceased in the same way real diamonds are made, but quicker. Uh, so, you know, like because we can make, you know, because we make synthetic diamonds now. Basically, they, they make a synthetic diamond using your using your ashes. That'd be kind of cool, but I feel like that's like an easy thing to like, oh, God, where's where's grandpa? Where's grandpa? He was right here a minute ago. It's give, like if you lose the ring, like, oh, God. Yeah. Did the dog eat it? The dog ate it. Oh, damn it. I got to make the dog into a diamond. <laughs> uh a, another a common one that we haven't actually talked about at all. Uh, Sean, you, what about what? How do you feel about getting buried at sea? Uh, I I don't think I Shuck would like your it. body in the drink. Yeah, because I'm not a big like ocean fan, like sailing kind of stuff. But like, if you were into that, I could totally see that. Like, if you were big into boating and things like that, yeah, why not? Burial at sea. I, I, out of all these so far, I'm just going with whatever's cheapest. Like if it's cheaper to just like you know, chuck my body on like the side of a carnival cruise ship and, and toss it over. Well, it's probably, I'm, I'm all for yeah, it. It's, the cheapest is probably like for just you to like, like, Oh, I feel it coming. And you just wander into the woods and disappear. Yeah. Just go dig a hole in the middle of the fucking woods yeah. and lay down in it. This is, I chose this. This is, my, <laughs> as, this is what I want. As your death breaths come in, the raccoon comes up. It's like, like not yet raccoon. I'm not dead. Ow. I'm not dead dead yet five more minutes oh i always knew this is how i would go uh how about having your body donated to science uh i've thought about that one too so i don't know if you know this richard but apparently a lot of like colleges have cadavers like at their school Mm -hmm. for people to look at yeah and it does not take much to get into those classes like they're level like 100 classes (laughs) So basically you're afraid that, you know, some, you know, straight C average student is going to be, you know, s- sticking their hands up. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his penis. <laughs> I'm going to make him talk. Hi, my name's Sean. What language <laughs> from I have insecurity issues. <laughs> <laughs> God, how fucked up. Okay, let's say hypothetically you die, you donate your body to science, and then your kid goes to that college. That'd be fucking crazy. Yeah. How traumatic would that be? They walk in, it's like, oh my God, this looks just like my dad. <laughs> I never loved you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go downstairs um, and talk to my friend and I'll hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> um, you could become a coral reef. Ooh, I'd be down for that. Um, like they tie an anchor to your feet and toss you in the, the water that way. <clears throat> the company Eternal Reef places your ashes into a natural reef mold, which is then deposited into the sea at a coral reef burial. This will attract colorful sea life and create a wonderful spot for a bit of scuba diving, a little more fun than a wet Sunday morning trip to Croydon Crematorium. Yeah, so they scuba dive, like, oh, coral reef, coral reef, oh, dead body. Well, no, it sounds like they cremate you first, and then they put your ashes into a mold. Oh, I got gotcha. you. And then they throw the mold in the reef, So then some, but it helps make the reef. So then some asshole's going to come over and, like, puck a, or pluck a piece of me off and take me home and be like, oh, look at this coral reef I have. Yeah, these these last few options are. It, it kind of seems like it's things you could do with your ashes. Um, you could mix your ashes with paint, and somebody could do a portrait. Ooh, I like that idea. I feel like that sounds like, or at least it sounds like this is stuff like if you get cremated, 
they could do multiples of these. Yeah, that's a good point because I I I don't know if I don't I don't know if you've ever had anyone like close to you cremated, but I have, and there are, there's a lot of ashes. Uh, we had our 120 uh, pound dog cremated, and it's like a five pound. Uh, okay. That's not like five. It's probably like a two and a half pound like container. Like there's a lot there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot, like a lot, lot. And you would think it'd look, it'd be like ashes, like, in, like you think ashes and you're thinking like, oh, like cigarette ashes, you know, where it's like kind of gray and blackish and no, like the ones I've seen, like, it's all like, it kind of looks like gravel almost, yeah. but like really, really fine gravel. Yeah. So I don't, um, this is probably one of yours, but like, I'd, I'd like the painting idea. Apparently the band members of the, I don't remember what band he was in, Lenny, the rock star guy. Oh, uh, 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 Motorhead. Motorhead. Um, apparently they took some of his ashes and um, they all did portraits of tattoos with it. So they mixed the ink. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I thought that, um, yeah. I don't know how uh, like safe that is, but that'd be kind of cool. Not necessarily a portrait, but maybe like a little tattoo. No, I like that idea. Um, what about, uh, this is, I feel like this is a very like short lived you know, pun it, pun not intended thing, but you could get your ashes mixed and be turned into a firework. Yeah, I'd like that. Nice little Fourth of July celebration. Yeah, that'd be a good like, Just like, oh, we're gonna launch Dad now. <laughs> <laughs> Mom sitting there goes, uh, oh, yep, your dad was always always couldn't finish. What was that, Mom? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Well, blew up too early. <laughs> Typical. Um, I did not know. This is the last one I have, and I didn't know this was a thing, but apparently you can get your ashes compressed into a vinyl record. Oh, my God. How creepy would that be if you did and, like, actually heard their voice? Let me out of this thing. <laughs> It's so cold when you're dead. <laughs> What's uh so you know for us that'd be kind of cool because if they did press it, they could like pick pieces of our podcast and put on it. That's true. That'd be kind of rad. I'd be down for that. Okay, okay, right now, okay. Let's say that you have died and your ashes are compressed into a vinyl record. And this is, this is right now, this is going to be the clip that's going to be on that record. What are you saying in the, in your, in your, (laughs) well, this, this is actually going to be our closing thoughts. Well, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be necessarily like from this episode, but what I want it to be is we're talking about raw dog anal ship (laughs) from like a bunch of episodes ago. Like, I want to see what Grandpa had to say. And then he was on Raw Dog Anal. Oh, okay, well, that was Grandpa. Who doesn't love a little Raw Dog Anal? Yeah. I don't know what I'd want. Would you want it combined? I mean, we're in it. We're in it right now. Yeah. Would, this is this is the clip. Would you want it? Co- well, I'm kind of like nasally, too, so that would be awful. But um, would you want it to be both of us, or would you want it just to be you? No, it could be both. Why not? Why not have it be both of us? Yeah. I don't know. That's a good point. Good question. I think just one of our good, like, intros. Yeah, yeah. So much. Yeah. I I bet there's a really good, like, two to three minute one where we just kind of, like, just chit-chat about nothing specific. So basically what you're saying is that if you want an epitaph to be placed on a record, it's got to be something that you've already said because you are now in the downhill slope. Well, like I told you, like if I die before you, I want you to find like the best episodes. And at my wake, that's all that plays like episodes from this. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I want like, like, like I said, like somebody like us talking about raw dog anal, some shit that it's somebody like be like, Oh, this is so what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Why is what? What? What's he talking about? No, no. In the mud. He put it where <laughs> in his what? Why did who picked this? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I I I would agree. Yeah, I would. Yeah, do everything you can to make my funeral as awkward as possible. Yeah, I want everybody to walk out of there feeling extremely uncomfortable because I don't know why not. Yeah. Well, I mean, otherwise it's all sad. Um, yeah, right. 
And if and if I know that everybody's left feeling extremely uncomfortable, then I will find that hilarious. Well, what will happen is like they did how many episodes? I'm going to go back and listen. It'll be like Van Gogh will become famous after we're dead. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But that's th- how that works. I think of the things, I guess if we're doing du- dual closing thoughts, I think I would want like the multiple things with the ashes maybe. Um, and if I could only do one thing, I think I'd want to be, uh, like the tree, like the full, like buried with the tree. Yeah. I, I kind of agree. I like the, I like the tree thing. I th- I think if, 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 if we're going to, if I, if I could only pick one thing, I would probably have to go with being a tree, not, not don't stick me in a tree. I want to be part of a yeah. tree. Yeah. The ashes with the seed kind of thing. Yeah, don't just don't just shove my body inside a redwood and call it a day. It's like, well, I don't want to cut it open, so we just tied him to it. <laughs> it's good enough, right? <laughs> All right. Well, before we kick, it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> yeah, look, there's a crow. He always talked about wanting to have a crow army. <laughs> All right. Well, let me do a little bit of housekeeping before we kick the bucket. Visit our website, we're at languageofbros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languageofbro. Email us at bros at languageofbrowitz.com. And as always, we want to thank our two patrons, the two Paul Bears at our funeral, Wendy and Aaron. Yeah, they should let they should let us know how how they want to go, so that way we can we can uh, maintain their wishes. Yeah, maybe we need to make a tier in Patreon whenever they if they donate. I get Aaron's liver. <laughs> I'd want his tongue because he's good at like singing. Calling it. That's why I want it. Wow. Speaking of making things awkward. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, is there anything else for my closer out? No, I'm good, sir. All right. Well, that's all the bros have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why. Be a why not. Not. How often would you come visit my tree? Um, I mean, I guess it would depend on how full my bladder was. He would have <laughs> wanted this. <laughs> no, he said. <laughs> He said once a week. Oh, I have to water it. Oh, I thought that was a P. It's a B. He said B with me, not P with me. <laughs> oh, well, he always did have a small bladder. Yeah. And drink all this water for nothing. <laughs>